Hello, what up guys? How you doing? It is Lasty here. Welcome to Monday. Welcome to a new episode of the FIFA 21 Ultimate Team Road to Glory. Finger points to the sky. It's a brand new week. Hope you guys all have a very successful week. Whether you're going back to school, whether you're just working or whatever you're up to, hope you meet your goals this week. One of my goals is to have a successful week on the RTG. Along with that comes you guys. Just hit the thumbs up. Because I'd like to see 5,000 likes every day. Uh, and yeah, you can help me hit my goals by hitting the thumbs up button. And of course, subscribing to the channel as well. That will be very useful if you are new around here. Um, so, today's episode is going to be... So I think what we are is like 7-3, and three, I think. Uh, we have our first 10 games done. We need to play a bunch of games today, though, because we're going to have to get that, like, middle section, that dreaded middle section out of the way. You know, like that, the, the, the Saturday section where things just typically don't go to plan. That's what I'm talking about right now. Uh, and I, I have done it. I've, I, I've done a kit SBC. Don't flame me in the comments because I know I said that I always think they're not worth it. Uh, I really like the look of this icon kit i mean not that the guy running out actually has it on because it's permanently broken but it's a black kit with like a gold stripe down the middle of it and it looks very regal and fancy i thought it looked quite nice so uh gonna go ahead and stick that on and then that germany kit looks like it would contrast well against it so uh, i'm gonna wear the icon kit and then i'm also gonna put that germany kit on as what my opponent's gonna be using um just because again i think that looks quite nice so yeah there you go you can see ronaldo sporting it it's fairly plain, uh, but it didn't cost like an 82 or an 83 rated squad or anything. It just cost 11 of your gold rare players, which if you're anything like me, you probably got a bunch of untradeable ones anyway that you don't mind sticking into an SBC like that. Um, every now and again, a little cosmetic part of the game will get me and it will get me to do an SBC. Most of the time I look at it and I'm just like, well, I've got like 300 kits in my club. I don't need any more. Um, but yeah, just sometimes something just, just looks just right, you know. Uh, anyway, we are 7-3 and three and we're 1-0 down in our first game of the session. Not what you love to see. However, Dybala works it into the box, knocks it out to Seydorf. Rooney can just keep turning. And, uh, I mean, he's, he's got agility and balance, you know. He's actually he's actually pretty good at, at moving on this game, this Rooney card. So, uh, he is he has been a fantastic centre mid for me, you know. His work rate and stuff is kind of second to none, I would say. He is, he's probably been the best centre mid that I've used. Uh, and, of course, he's so very good going forwards as well. Uh, he's very useful. So, <clears throat> what I'll do this episode is actually give you, like... Uh, as the gameplay is going on in the background, we can talk about this crazy team that I've got. Uh, and after playing with it for a bunch of games, I now feel a little bit more like uh, I'm ready to, to give opinions on the players. So uh, I can't remember if I've already done it, but if not, I, I will do it at some point, which is <clears throat> to bring out my red goalkeeper from Aston Villa and put Pope back in. Because uh, as much as I don't trust the goalie, People reckon that Pope's better, and um, to be honest, this red keeper of mine really didn't save much. There's so many times where, I, like this this game right here, I don't know how many shots my opponent had, um, but I don't know, if it, it just felt like my goalie just didn't save anything, even if it's Pope. Like, sometimes he'll have a terrible game as well. Uh, I can't even notice who's in goal right now. I've got a feeling I've already switched it. I genuinely don't know, but uh, yeah, I, the long story short is I don't really trust any goalkeeper, but uh, I, <laughs> for some reason, people use Pope, so I'm going to go back to, to using him as well. Uh, so I get taught a lesson there, 7-2, but eight shots on target, seven goals, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, it, I don't think any of the keepers really work when they don't want to. Um, so we lose the... The first game of the session, really not what you want to see. So 7-3 and three becomes 7-4. and four. Uh, It does seem kind of nuts on next gen. The, the teams are, are pretty crazy. And yeah, it's, you know, if you are, I've probably said this a bunch of times, but if you are someone that was willing to um, find a, an Xbox Series X, you know, if you are willing to find and then pay for a next gen console or even pay above retail for one because you really wanted one and they're so difficult to get hold of uh if if that is you then i would probably class you as like a hardcore gamer which means you're more than likely going to be a little bit better at the game than most uh which 
to me means you're probably a little bit better than me, which is why I think I'm coming up against these more... I just think they might be more hardcore players. I don't know. And, and that's not to say if you're playing on old gen or the old version of the game that you are not a hardcore player because there are many circumstances of which maybe you wouldn't have a next gen console. Who, who knows? But um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like the people that have really gone out of their way to try and get hold of one of these consoles... Whether or not it's just luck or something, I don't know. Um, but the, the teams seem fairly crazy. The players seem pretty competent. Uh, there's not many games that I come up against where it's like super, super easy. But there are a few, of course. Um, it happens. Just feel like, I don't know. I, I just like, I like that you can get into a game instantly and, and not get that initializing bug. Which is frustrating to wait for ages and then it tells you that your opponent left and stuff. Uh, and then also, obviously, I do like the... Uh, there you go. Pope is in there, of course, in this game. Um, but what I also do like is is just like the way the pitch looks. So, yeah, I'm a sucker for that. But we will... Yeah, I think you'll find some point during tomorrow's episode I do drop back into the old... Uh, old generation version of the game where the pitch doesn't look quite as cool just because I thought maybe my record wasn't too hot or something like that and I figured we'd like change it back or something so anyway I do come away with a 4-3 victory in that game and I know I said I would talk about the players and I've only talked about the goalkeeper so far but let's move on to the defense shall we uh so that's eight and four all right the record isn't isn't like the best this week but I can I can live with that it's not not the worst record in the world Eusebio, Rooney, Ronaldo, again, like crazy team. But hey, I've also got a crazy team, so I should... At least that puts me on a level playing field with these with these people, you know? Like, until they then go ahead and slap me. Uh, but anyway, on to my defence. So, in my defence this week, I have Dallo as a left-back. I have uh, to do Ruben Diaz as a centre-back, Reese James as a centre-back on 7 chem, and then Tavernier on full chemistry uh, as my right-back. Starting with Tavernier, I actually think he's a way better sub-centre-mid than he is like a starting right-back. That being said, he's still pretty solid, and he's very quick, and he can he can save you every now and again when like your opponent kind of gets one-on-one. -on -one. He is he is quick enough to catch up to a lot of things. Uh, like he's 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 super fast, uh, and he does like put push his weight around and stuff. He feels fairly strong and just good on the ball and and all of that stuff. So a great well round uh, all rounder, but I just kind of prefer him. Like, I prefer bringing him on as a CDM or a centre mid. I think he does great there. Uh, and would I would recommend you guys play yours there if you get the chance. Um, on to the other fullback then, Dallo. Uh, I, I, for some reason, I just haven't rated this one. I think he'd be a brilliant centre back. Because at that point, the pace that he's got would be... I mean, the pace that he's got with a shadow on him. He should be fine. He should be well into the 90s. It should feel quick. But for some reason, there's something about him which I don't really like. And it might be the fact that I'm playing a left back who's right footed at left back. You know, maybe the right back version is a lot better. He does hold a higher price. But I figured that was probably just because he gets that strong link to flashback Ronaldo. Anyway, that, that, I don't really rate him if I'm honest. And then, so that's like polar opposite views uh, on my left back to my right back. And I think it's kind of the same again for my centre backs. I've started to really dislike Ruben Diaz. Like, he was a, such a cool card to pack. And I like the design. I like how it looks and stuff. But like... He's just genuinely, uh, he feels slow, and I've got a shadow on him, and he had like 76 pace to begin with. He shouldn't be too slow, right, with mid-80s pace, but for some reason he just isn't, there's just something about him which I, uh, isn't clicking, I think it's his speed. So, yeah, like, I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't recommend spending the money on him. Reese James, on the other hand... Even on seven chemistry, I think he might be one of the best centre backs on the game. Like just because he 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 feels tall enough, he feels strong enough. Whether he is or isn't is you know like he he it feels fine in game. He's obviously rapid, and he has great defensive stats and stuff. Like he he just again catches people up like it's no problem uh, and out muscles people as well and. I don't know. I just find that these fullbacks on the game are just absolutely sensational at a centre back, uh, and then uh, you have to have really, really fast fullbacks. Is what I seem to have found, especially with the way I play. I don't know. I seem to get caught out quite a lot. Um, maybe it's because I'm not like drop back or one depth or anything like that. You know, we're on uh, quite a high pressure one, and we're on like four or five depth. So. Uh, yeah, I feel like maybe I get just counted a little bit and the, and the pace helps me, helps me get back and try and clutch it up. Um, but 
yeah, so Reese James, I highly recommend him. If he's within your budget, which is quite expensive now, he's like pushing on 550 to 600k on Xbox, and way more than that, obviously, on the other consoles. Uh, but uh, he is he's really good. Uh, he's And I'm just playing him on 7 chem. Um, and that also goes for Kleiber as well, who I've been bringing on for Ruben Diaz because I just think he's better. Even on 5 chemistry, right, from halftime onwards, Kleiber is a better centre-back than Ruben Diaz. Which is weird. A five chem right back is a better centre back than a high rated full chemistry centre back. That doesn't make sense to me, but it, that's how this game works. So, yeah, I recommend Kleiber as well. If you've got him uh, and you did do him and you're struggling to fit him in somewhere, like if you don't want to play him right back, you've got a different full back or something, I do recommend him at centre back. I think he's great. So, yeah, there you go. Um, so that's goalkeeper in defence, by the way. He scored a, a goal there with uh, with Elsha where we did a couple of uh, flip-flaps, which, yeah, I, I'm starting to learn it. If I'm going in that direction, which for me is like that, but I guess for you it was like that way, uh, when I'm going to the right, uh, I can do the flip-flap like whenever I want if I'm going the other way I don't know the button combination it should just be the complete opposite right uh, but I can't even remember remember it at the time so I'm just terrible on the sticks really uh, in in all honesty but um we unlock I think everyone would just unlock all of this stuff just from playing the game a little bit I think you just needed to play a few score a few in any game mode we can uh, unlock the no room for racism kit tifo badge and stadium theme i guess all of the cosmetics i think so uh we might rock one of them but or, however i did see some stuff on twitter where people saying that the kit itself is broken um so unfortunately sometimes your opponents are wearing a kit clash kit which is uh, obviously not what you want on the game uh, i was a little bit worried about doing this particular sbc for the kit that i've got right now because normally all new kits seem to be broken on the game and they'll match you up against that team of the week away kit uh, and you'll both be wearing like a black shirt or if you get a white shirt you'll both be wearing a white shirt there's something broken on the game with the kits right um so i was fortunate uh, i'm quite glad as well to see that pretty much all the time my opponent was wearing the kit that i chose for them there were one or two games where it for some reason didn't choose that every single time i go into a match i choose my home kit and then I choose the same you know the, the, the away kit that I've chosen because I know they won't clash uh, I'm not really going to trust the game uh, when it comes to them picking the kits for me and stuff because I don't want a kit clash I don't need it to get any more difficult you know weekend league is hard enough for all of us without kit clashes and stuff that make you lose concentration and struggle to see um but yeah, anyway, I can't even remember how many wins we're up to right now. But what I do know is that I forgot. When once we hit 10 wins, I, I, it didn't even register in my head that I would, ha would have unlocked that red player pick. Um, so what you've got is I think I eventually get up to 11 wins. And then the last thing we do in the episode is open my red player pick. So yeah, I, I, for some reason it just completely es escaped my mind. I, I didn't realize and remember. Um, but we get a penalty here. Dybala steps up. And he slots away, which is uh, very good of him. He's a good penalty taker. I do seem to be scoring quite a lot with him. I also have saved, I think, nearly every penalty I've I've conceded this weekend. And that's normally quite a lot of penalties. So <laughs> I feel quite proud of myself for that. Um, but yeah, 2-1 up here, 2-1 at half time. We're kind of having a very even game. My opponents actually had more possession. However, we've created a few more chances. Uh, so I think I just about deserve to be in the lead. Ronaldo plays a crazy Hail Mary through ball to El Shirawi. Uh, they really do obviously need to get fixed at some point. Because I think that's just been... That's been like the key way for people to get through defenses for this entire weekend league. Happens against me a lot. Uh, and obviously when I can make it happen, it happens for me. Um, but I think sometimes... The way I build up just doesn't... Uh, the formation that I use and stuff. I think a 4-4-2 is perfect for that because you can just whip it down the line, you know. Uh, but in my 4-1-2-1-2 narrow, it gets a little bit narrow and there's not someone to run onto it all the time. So 10 wins in the weekend league has opened up a, uh, a an extra red player pick for me this week. One of three foot champions players. Oh dear. I mean, yeah, uh, I'm glad I didn't, like, work extra hard for that. And it was just along the way because, I mean, I'll take Nkunku. He actually doesn't look too bad. Pretty solid all-round card. But I'm not really, I'm probably not going to be using him. Uh, I'll probably throw him into an SBC or something. But 
I think as players go, like he's probably quite usable, right? He'll move all right on the ball because of that 87 dribbling. But I don't know like how usable he is compared to some of the other players that I've got in my club who are obviously quite ridiculous. Um, so yeah, that is, that's going to wrap up the episode for today. Uh, we're now 24 games in with Reese James, 55 games in with Ruben Diaz. Uh, and I don't think I'll be using either in next weekend's weekend league uh, because I will just like to try out something new. But Ronaldo has a ridiculous goal to game ratio. He really does. Uh, and then um, Dybala, 100 games, 63 goals, 70 assists. That's very, very good as well. Considering a lot of that, he came on as a sub. So... I love him, you know, uh, Elshar, fun player as well, if he's still out, and if you've got the fodder for it, I do recommend him, I think he's great, um, but yeah, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode, would you do me the kind favor of hitting the thumbs up button, please, I'm asking, I'm asking you nicely, so I think you can go ahead and do it for me, right, 5,000 likes is your goal, uh, subscribe as well to the channel if you're new around here, I thank you for that, and of course, come and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The links are down below. Have a lovely day, everyone. Like I said, you know, it's Monday. Make sure you're trying to reach your goals. Set yourself a couple of goals, even if they're just easy ones. Just like set yourself a couple of goals so that you can work on something this week. Uh, and let me know how that goes down below in the comments. And I'll catch you tomorrow for a new episode. Peace.